This is the famous Stan Smith shoe recognized around the world. And for the first time in a long time, it's going to see some big changes. No, sadly, this is not the crossover with Heelys that we've all been asking for, but it's still pretty wild. Adidas is going to be the first shoe company ever to make shoes out of mushrooms. Let's be honest, if somebody wakes up one day and thinks, Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's make leather shoes out of mushrooms. It's because either they are batshit crazy or they know something that we don't. So we made this video to answer the question, why is Adidas doing this? And the short answer, honestly, marketing. And maybe a genuine interest in making the world a better place? We'll get into that a little bit later. But probably first and foremost, the decision was made as a way to promote and develop the sustainability goals that Adidas has as a company. One of these goals is to increase the amount of sustainable materials in their products. And they claim to be on good track to do this as of 2021, with apparently more than 60% of all their products being made with sustainable materials. Now, you know that we can be a little picky when it comes to these sorts of statements. More than 60% of products made with sustainable materials. This is how they define sustainable. We define products as sustainable when they show environmental benefits versus conventional products due to the materials used or their respective production technologies. So basically, according to Adidas, being just like a tiny bit better than what is currently being used is considered sustainable. So that's kind of like saying, you're looking for your new partner to just be marginally better than the crazy X you just dumped. And come on, you're better than that. Then comes made with. Made with, of course, does not mean that it's made entirely out of sustainable materials. Essentially, they can make a regular shoe, put organic cotton laces in it, and say that this is one of the many products that fall under the 60% that have some sustainable materials in them. Yes, we're picky, but somebody's got to do it. Adidas, we see you. Yet, we don't want to completely discredit Adidas' apparent efforts either. They're well known for embracing sustainability practices, but mostly when it reflects well from a marketing standpoint. They talk about their plans to make a 100% recyclable shoe that somehow doesn't even use glue. They were the first company to ever launch a shoe made out of ocean plastic. They did this in partnership with a nonprofit called Parlay, and it honestly looked really cool. And today we see them investing in an exciting new material to help solve one of the footwear industry's biggest problems, leather. This new adventure is actually being played out with other massive companies who wanted to get involved. There's Lululemon, Keurig, and Stella McCartney. The company in question, formerly known as Milo, hopes to disrupt the leather industry with, yes, mushrooms. This leather-like material is made of mycelium. This is the network of fungal threads out of which can sprout mushrooms. There's a lot of new and exciting applications for this stuff from packing material to concrete. If you're interested in hearing more about this kind of interesting new phenomenon, let us know and maybe we'll make another video about it. Now while you're down there, make sure you're subscribed. Now before we go down the mushroom rabbit hole, let's quickly rewind a little bit and talk about why we need mushroom leather in the first place. Today there are two mainstream sorts of leather. We have animal leather and then petroleum derived leather, which is basically plastic leather, also known as pleather. The truffle is, neither of these options are particularly good. So let's do a little compare contrast. 47% of the animal leather goods market in 2020 was footwear. So this is a big deal for Adidas. And that leather involves raising the most polluting livestock on planet Earth, which are cows. These are extremely resource intensive animals to keep. And there's also a ton of ethical and moral issues associated with the industry as well. But even once the animals are killed, the tanning and drying process relies on toxic chemicals and is often done in countries where the health and safety regulations are weak or not even implemented at all. So, unnaturally, the answer to all of this, of course, was to get the plastics industry involved. Because when has that ever backfired? They came up with, of course, uncreatively, plastic leather, which does not involve raising livestock and overall pollutes less during production. But it's still bad. It's very toxic, it relies on fossil fuels, and at the end of the day, it is still just 
plastic garbage that will never break down, like ever. But the biggest pleather flaw is that it's not as good as leather in terms of quality. And you will likely have to replace your non-leather shoes more often than their real leather counterparts. Now, if you want to see a full video that we made about Blundstones, we talk a bit about what makes a good quality pair of boots long lasting. We also talk a little bit about why those boots might be a titch overrated. And hey, if you like this kind of video, consider hitting that subscribe button and uh, you'll get way more of them just like delivered to you on the internet. All to say, we don't really have a long lasting, cruelty free, toxic free material that isn't made of plastic trash yet. Now, regardless if Adidas is investing in these mushroom farms to make Brooklyn hipsters happy or out of a sincere effort to be more sustainable, we need to try and answer the question. Is mushroom leather the material of the future? Now, of course, according to the Milo Consortium, this is a bloomin' big opportunity. There's a mushroom joke there. First, this stuff seems to grow pretty quickly with very little resources, which is an issue in the industry right now. All it needs as a base is some sort of agricultural waste product like wood chips, corn husks, or hemp. Then fungal spores and water are added after. They then put this mixture on a rectangular tray and the mycelium grows in a controlled chamber. 10 days later, and you have aerial mycelium that can be further manufactured into leather. Another benefit is that it can be grown in pieces to the specific size and shape required by a designer, which eliminates a whole bunch of cutting room waste. Isn't that freaking cool? I mean, you can't grow a cow shaped like a handbag, can you? Compared to making plastic out of crude oil or raising livestock, mycelium production seems hard to compete with. No livestock, uses agricultural waste and apparently no fossil fuels, which is amazing. And at the end of the product's life, it just becomes dirt again. As for the tanning process, Milo claims to work with partners who, quote, meet top certifications in sustainability, including gold standards from the leather working group. Overall, it seems like Milo understood the assignment took those notes and is sucking up to be the number one teacher's pet. Now, if all of this seems a little too good to be true, well, it is. Everybody has their dirt, am I right? Get it? Another mushroom thing? Mushroom leather is not plastic free. If you dive into the Q&A session on the Milo website, you can read that the material is made from mycelium and is not petroleum derived which sounds right. But if you scroll further down, you discover that Milo is not currently plastic free. And that probably between 15 and 50% of the components are not bio-based. Now I would love to know more about these percentages because at this point they're very vague and we don't know a lot more about it at this point. The reason for the blend is apparently to increase the toughness of the material itself because as they rightly point out, people aren't going to be stoked to buy a lesser product just because it's sustainable. But despite all of this murky statistics, Adidas is still out here saying that the introduction of Milo as a new material is a major step forward in our bold ambition to help end plastic waste. You notice how they didn't say that it was plastic free though. In conclusion, we don't want to be a spore sport. This is an exciting new technology, and we are hopeful that it's going to make lasting change. So does this automatically disqualify the Stan Smith 2.0? Well, not really. One thing that we are really hopeful about is that this new product is built around their flagship shoe. See, their ocean plastic stuff was kind of a fringe launch separate from their main lineup. But this whole new product is launched around the poster child of the company. Now, in terms of Milo itself, we saw that at a production level, mycelium leather strikes a really nice balance between these two options. It's sort of like the veggie burgers from 2010. Like, they're not good by any means, but they're definitely better than eating a block of tofu stuffed in a bun. Now, with so much room for improvement yet to be seen, there is still one thing that we cannot assess, and that is durability. Will the mushroom leather last as long as the animal leather counterpart? Will it be as cheap as the plastic stuff? Will it be repairable, long lasting, recyclable, or compostable? Milo has promised to share a full life cycle assessment of their fungi leather, and you can bet 
that they're going to do so with the announcement of the new Adidas or Lululemon products that they're partnering on. We're hoping to make a full follow-up video on this subject when those products eventually reach the real world, so please let us know if you'd be interested in hearing about that. And of course, if you are into that and you wanna see more of it, consider subscribing. Hopefully our sport taste and jokes didn't push you away. And of course, if you do that, we will see you in the next one.